All right, if you remember, uh, I bought a couple old um, HP power meters uh, as donor bodies for <laughs> other projects, but I always save the stuff that's inside of them. And one of the things that I saved was these little uh, calibrators. So the uh, uh, power meters have a 50 megahertz 0 dBm calibrator in them, and that comes out to the front of the instrument and is used to calibrate the instrument. And so uh, this is all self-contained, uh, plus and minus 15 volts, and out comes 50 megahertz at 0 dBm. There's a 10-turn potentiometer in here to adjust the uh, power output level, and it's referenced to something inside, uh, depending on how fancy a power meter you have, it's referenced to different things. Um, and so I thought, oh, hey, great. I could use this as a little calibrator for my tiny SA. Um, I would have a known zero dBm source that I could look at or use it as a source to test things. Um, and like, you know, attenuators or something like that just gives me a source. So uh, what I did was I, uh, first of all, I don't like the uh, SMC uh, connectors, the threaded connectors. Uh, I guess they're 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 all threaded, but th these are just little small little ones. I just don't like them. I like the SMAs. So uh, what I want to do is I want to r remove this connector and put in an SMA. So convert this box, and then maybe mount it on a little um, a little stand or something for because the back needs to be shielded. So uh, we need to cover that up. And the little uh, potentiometer sticks out the side so you can still adjust the zero dBm. So yeah, so let me do that. Okay, sorry I didn't video this, but I took some pictures while I was doing it. Um, this is the uh, little board that I'm going to t uh, change the connector on. So here you see that I've removed the connector. Uh, it's quite a large heat mass, so I, I cut the leg. Luckily, it was standing up off the board, so I could cut the legs and then desolder the center pin and then desolder all the little bits left in the board. Um, so that worked out well. And then uh, I have an SMA stand up version, a PC board stand up version of a SMA connector. So I put that on. That worked out great. Uh, I had to enlarge the hole a little bit in the case to put it all back together again. And then I fabricated a little, little uh, aluminum base, a little quarter inch uh, thick aluminum plate. Um, and so now it's all back together again. Okay, so this is how it turned out. Uh, like I said, plus minus 15 ground. Uh, and here's my 50 megahertz, zero dBm. A nice little uh, aluminum, aluminum thing. And it, it's a nice little size. It's a nice little portable thing. I can always hook it up to my, my bench power supply and uh, calibrate things with it. So uh, first thing we need to do is calibrate this itself. We need to, we need to set uh, 0 dBm very accurately on this, and I have just the instrument for that. Okay, I put it in my rack, my old um, uh, WaveTech um, power meter, uh, and uh, this is the one that I designed a long time ago. And so I do have a very nice uh, setup. I have a, a real sensor, uh, one megahertz to 20 gigahertz. And so when you turn these things on, uh, in fact, let me just do that. Um, so turn them on, it should say sensor and calibrator or something like that. WaveTech got sold to Gigatronics. Well, it's already been calibrated recently, but you, uh, it has its own calibrator. Now, it's a much fancier calibrator than just zero dBm. It actually has a stepped attenuator and it calibrates it over a large dynamic range and everything. Anyway, you just push the cal button and it does everything automatically. So it zeroes the sensor. Um, you're always running power meters, you're always zeroing them because they always have thermal drift in them and stuff. So uh, if you have the sensor attached to the calibrator, it knows to do a calibration. If it doesn't detect the you're screwed onto the calibrator, then it says, oh, uh, I'll just zero then. So it's just one button that you have to press. So. Doesn't take too long. There we go. So. 
minus 100 dBm. That's pretty small. Okay, so let's uh, let's first test out the uh, power meter here. Let me show you that it uh, it works a treat. Um, so I'm going to let's see here. Can we just tilt this up? I think we can. Ah, uh, there's a there's something shiny there. Let me move the camera. Okay, so uh, let's go into the RF generator section here. 100 100 megahertz. Uh, We'll start out at, say, uh, uh, minus 10 dBm. And so minus 10 dBm should be coming out of, uh, out of this connector right here. Um, let's see, let's go. Yeah, OK. So let's see if I can just swing down here. You can see that we're measuring. Is this, does this zoom any? No, we're zoomed in all the way. It's measuring minus 8. And that's because this machine can't output anything. It's complicated, but um, let's go to minus 20. I should be able to read minus 20. Okay. And uh, there we go. I think you can see that it's minus uh, minus 19.84. So that's pretty good. So let's uh, click it down. Minus 30. Minus 29.92. Uh, minus third, oh, minus 40, it's flickering, uh, minus, oops, I'm in the wrong place, uh, minus 50, and then we probably need to zero again. All right, so let's, uh, let's go way down here and let's zero the instrument. All right, and then let's, yeah, minus 70. So this instrument at the bottom, bottom end is about minus 70. So it's doing minus 60, minus 59.9, and then uh, minus 70, it's doing minus 68.4. So the very, very, very bottom noise floor of this instrument is minus 70 dBm. And it's a very, very small amount of picoamps that you're trying to measure with this thing. So uh, it's really, really quite sensitive. So anyway, but I do know that this instrument has a stepped attenuator, so it can, it can go much lower than this. So it can go down to minus 120 dBm just fine, very easily. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to set... Um, we're going to set up the... A little uh, power meter here and so let me get that all hooked up and we'll uh, see if, if, if we can't calibrate it all right so I have a uh, power applied and I have uh, the output uh, connected to the uh, sensor and so we should be able to go over to the uh, power meter and let's take a look all right there we go hey right out of the box it's not too bad minus 0.16 dBm uh, that is very, very close. Let's see if we can tweak it and make it exactly 0 dBm. I mean, that's pretty close. That's probably all you really need. But since we can do it, let's see if we can't tweak it. So I need to be able to see what I'm doing here. It's going up, I think. There we go. That's going down. Oh, there we go. There we go. Zero dBm. So our little box is now calibrated. So it was actually, um, I made several turns on that pot. It's not sensitive at all. It's very, very uh, robust in setting zero dBm. So it's, uh, it's very, very good. Now, do I trust this as being zero dBm? Yes, I definitely trust it. Um, this calibrator actually has a calibrator inside the calibrator. So um, or a power meter inside the calibrator, I should say. So there's the calibrator, uh, this, the power meter that's, that we see here is based off of some zero bias Schottky diodes. Um, and they require a calibrator to calibrate them. But what calibrates the calibrator? Well, 
inside of this is a stepped attenuator, but inside that is a uh, oscillator, and then that oscillator is there's a uh, section that monitors that oscillator, and it's a thermistor. So there is a thermistor-based power meter inside the power meter. So um, and that's not going to drift. So uh, it is quite accurate. So I, I believe that this zero dBm is a zero dBm. All right, so let's hook up the uh, let's hook up the calibrator, and I have the calibrator going into a twenty dB pad into the uh, into the spectrum analyzer, and we're measuring minus eighteen point three. Uh, so minus it's fluctuating a little bit, but minus eighteen point three. And there you can see our 50 megahertz uh, uh, carrier. Um, so it is a bit off. Um, let's see here. We are about 1.7 dB off. So if we go to level external amp and we put in 1.7, now we're measuring minus 20 dBm exactly. Um, so that's the way you put an offset into the uh, spectrum analyzer and get a get an accurate reading. So it was 1.7 dB off. And now I can always go check it. Uh, zero dBm should be okay. So let's go ahead and get rid of this 20 dB pad just to see if if it reads if it reads zero. And it's measuring 0.5 dBm. Oh, there we go, zero. Oh, it's fluctuating between zero and 0.5. So I'd say it's calibrated pretty good. I, like to cal I don't like to calibrate it at the very high end. I like to cal calibrate it in the middle somewhere that you're normally going to be using it. And I know this 20 dB pad is quite accurate. So and there we go. It is calibrated. Put the, uh, put the attenuator back on. And there we go. Now we're measuring 19 and a half. And now we're not measuring correctly at all. Minus 45. That's weird. What happened? Oh, there, oops. There we go. I don't know what happened. Something was loose. Uh, minus 19 and a half. So now we are half a dB off. So let's go to our external amplifier again. Let's put in... Oh, the offset disappeared. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, the offset disappeared. Oh, maybe it just doesn't show it to you. So we're at 17.8. So that's 2.2. .2. External amp, 2.2. .2. Now we're measuring minus 20.5, so it, its resolution isn't great, is it? External amp, 1.7. Yeah, 1.7 is better, minus 20. Okay, 